Oh, hi there. I decided to do um, three in succession and I'll be posting them sporadically over the next, between tonight and tomorrow morning. Because I hate inundating you. I don't want you to think, oh my God, not another one. You know what I mean? I know how that can be sometimes. But anyway, I'm Black Bright. For those of you who are just visiting my channel, um, welcome, subscribe, share, like. And for those of you who know me, you know my drill, you know what I'm like, you know I'm sporadic, um, inconsistent, all of that stuff. And you never know what you're going to get next. But um, I guess it's, it's good and it's bad in a sense, because I guess it's good in the sense that you'll always be interested in what I'm putting up. And you can either say, oh, well, that interests me or it doesn't. And there'll be those who are just curious about, you know, having something new to, to research on or to think about or to find out more about. So that's what I do. I put out food for thought. And if it's something that interests you, you could find out more information about it. Because remember... I'm not a connoisseur, I'm not an expert, I'm not a specialist, I'm just a vlogger sharing information. What do they call us now? Social something or others. I don't even know what they call us. They give us some fancy names anyway. But anyway, um, I wanted to talk about these DWP forsters. Talk about kicking people while they're down. There's been millions of scams. You know, there's vulnerable people who I don't know if people have seen them coming out of the um, DWP, but they've been approaching them outside and saying that they belong to the DWP and they can get loans that they don't have to pay back. I mean, telling them blatant lies. Now, after that, what they do, what these fraudsters do is they take they take all the details from the individual and you know, sometimes you kind of think, why would somebody give information to a third party? But, you know, when you deal with things like banks, in essence, and they send around their representatives, or even when you're thinking about estate agents and they send around their representatives, it's not necessarily unrealistic to believe that they're sending out their representatives. And so you don't have to actually see them in the building. So I can understand how some people get caught off guard, and especially when they're desperate. But for these people to deliberately lie and tell them that they're going to get this money that they don't have to pay back. And what they do is they take they, they take the individual's details. They claim on behalf of the individual. When that money goes into that individual's account, they charge a finder's fee. Now, there was one woman, she got £1,595 in advance, and the finder's fee was £1,000. On top of that, she got her money stopped because she has to pay back the whole of the money that, they, that she borrowed. And so you've got people that, you, I don't know how people can do that to the vulnerable, to people who don't have money people who have children, they would do that. I mean, people are so calculating and cold. But I guess, you know, if people can break into people's houses and steal what they have, not caring and kill people, I guess this is mild by comparison. But it's just so calculating. So now all the, they've got all these people, I mean, DWP are trying to find out what to do about the scams, but when an individual has consciously um, reneged their authority and given that authority to a third party and has agreed to everything and signed off, there's nothing really the DWP can do because that person should have been reading the documents and known what was to expect it. I mean, I don't understand how some of these people can charge a, a finder's fee of £1,000. Surely, if you had read the documents, you would have noticed that the finder's fee was like 75% of what you're getting, and then you'll think, well, no, I don't want it. I don't understand. Not unless you're dealing with people who have literacy problems, because they could be at a disadvantage. If they can't actually read what they um, read the documentation that these people are sending to them, then that is a problem. 
But then these people should know their limitations and therefore get somebody else to read it for them and say, look, you know, I've been approached by this person. They've sent me this. Could you read this for me and let me know what it says? And then you can kind of understand, then they can get an understanding of what that person is asking them to sign. But these people are signing things willy-nilly, left, right and centre. And these fraudsters are getting thousands for doing nothing, for preying on people. And I don't know if they find random phone numbers and call them up and say, look, you can get some free money in advance until your money, until your universal credit. Some people... They're just not sure about how the system works. That's why they really need to be informed. The DWP, what they do is they give you money and it takes up to six to eight weeks to get it. Or is it months? Anyway, it takes, it takes a while. Anyway, they'll tell you how long it takes. But the important thing is, is that they will give you an advance, but you have to pay it back. It's not free. With the, the way they advertised it, with this multi-million adver advertising campaign that they did in the Metro, they make it look like, oh, yeah, they're going to give you money. You can get an advance if you're hard up. And they've made it look like you can actually get money for free. They, have, they should have put up there, um, you can get an advance that you need to repay or we'll advance you money that you need to repay. For some reason, I think in some people's minds, when they think an establishment like that and it's a government establishment, it's not beyond their, their thinking to believe that that money is going to be free or somehow they're entitled to it for some reason or another for having to wait so long. So they might even think, OK, they're going to give me an advance. But that advance is because I've been waiting for six weeks. So it's my money anyway. They could think like that. As opposed to them thinking, well, you have to wait anyway. And while you're waiting, you might need something to tie you over. So we're going to lend you that money. I think it's a damn shame that people will take advantage of people like that. And on top of that, lie to them. And on top of that, ask them for finders fees from 590 something to a thousand. It's absolutely disgusting. Knowing that that person, you know what? You know the way those fraudsters think they think if they're stupid enough to part with their money, that's their business. That is their mentality. If they're stupid enough, then that's up to them. But always remember, anything too good to be true is usually is there is nothing free in this world if you see something come through your door or in your email box or on the telephone that says it's free run a mile run a mile nothing is free and what they do they prey on people who, who try to get something for nothing that's what they do you know that's what all this lottery is about and all of these other little get quick rich schemes it's all is aimed at people who want to get something for nothing or who think there's a way of getting something for nothing. There is no way. And all you're going to do is get ripped off. Anyway, that's my little bit of preaching, my little bit of an opinion. I'm just going to read what I've got here that I'll put in the link as I usually do. So, you know, I'm not making it all up. So fraudsters are turning up on people's doorsteps to offer free loans which are actually fraudulently signing them in up to universal credit so don't and uh, don't entertain any cold callers i mean on the new on the television they tell us and they kind of tell us to do with you know landscaping or your windows or selling doors or doing some kind of gardening they kind of warn us about that but Anybody who cold calls your house, who knocks on your door, do not entertain them. You know, do not entertain them. Even if a friend, even if they say a friend told you, don't entertain them. Go to the place of business. Who, wherever they say they work or whichever company they say they represent, say, OK, then I'll call. Okay, let me have your number. I'll call your office in the morning and deal with the office. 
Don't deal with people who turn up at your door. That's just my humble advice. Um, okay. As reported, the loan sharks are simply using victims' personal details to secure an advance payment, leaving those on benefits targeted penniless. A pregnant mum says she was left penniless after claiming online loans firm pocketed her benefit. The 26-year-old said she applied for an emergency loan through a website to replace her broken cooker. But, it reports, but it's reported that instead of processing a loan, the firm actually used her financial details to make a universal credit claim. How do they do that? Why would DWP allow a third party to make a claim? Well, obviously she's probably signed it over to a third party, I guess. Anyway, that led to her regular benefits payments being stopped as the new benefit claim kicked in. Those old time, old star benefits are switched on to universal credit if any changes are made to their claim. But as the process takes five weeks, the Department of Work and Pensions provides an advance, a loan essentially against future benefit payments. Tens of millions of pounds of public money is believed to have been stolen with claimants left owing hundreds after fraudsters targeted Britain's main welfare benefit, universal credit. So there must be a loophole somewhere. Somebody must know how to do that. I mean, that's never been done before with any other benefits. So why is it, why are they able to do that with universal credit? I don't understand how a third party can access money like that. Something's not right. And the individual should not be responsible for a faulty system. Why should they be made to pay back because of a deficient system? Because obviously there's something wrong. If fraudsters can go to DWP, claim on somebody else's behalf, and it doesn't ring any bells to universal credit, that these people are, are, are claiming for someone else. It's not like they're disabled or anything like that. Wouldn't that ring alarm bells that somebody else is claiming? But I wonder if they're filling the form up with the, with the people in front of them and making them sign it. And then they go off and oh, oh, it's beyond me. I just don't understand it. What fraudsters don't tell you is that the money you'll receive is actually an advance from universal credit. After the fraudsters have taken their cut of your advance, victims are left to pay back the total amount after their universal credit payments begin. One scammer took 1000 as their fee from a payment of 1525 According to DWP, 10% of new universal credit claims could be fraudulent. Victims have included vulnerable people, such as those who are out of work, homeless or have drug dependency issues. Victims who sign up to these fraudulent loans are simply receiving money from that advance. However, they stop receiving their normal benefit payments and their universal credit payments kick in. They'll be lower as the advance is being paid back. So people claiming the loan, I wonder who they think they're paying it back to. I really don't understand how that works. Because if they think, oh, because they've been told that they don't have to pay it back, but then why is it called a loan? There's something fishy going on here because... If these fraudsters are telling them that they're going to give them a loan that they haven't got to pay back, why are they calling it a loan? Why are they not calling it a fund, a grant or something? Because to me, if you tell me you're, you're going to get me a free loan, I'm going to assume you've got to pay it back. And who do I pay it back to? But that's how they're crafty, because by saying you don't have to pay it back, they're not going to be asking um, about who to pay it back to and they're not going to realise that it's universal credit. These people have thought about everything. They're just not reading the documents, that's all I can say. 
Teesside Live has reported that websites have been set up to capture details from those legitimately looking for loans. The National Fraud and Cybercrime Reporting Centre listed how the scam develops in the hope of warning people not to fall for it. So this is how it develops, peeps. So be careful if you know anybody on Universal Credit, please tell them don't apply for any loans through a third party. It's not worth it. Nothing's free. Okay, the victim is contacted by the fraudster, offer, offering them a free or low-cost government loan or grant. The fraudster requests personal and financial information from the target and uses these details to apply for universal credit in the victim's name, without informing the victim about it. So, that goes my point. The victim doesn't know. So how the hell is that approved by universal credit? Because if that victim has to sign that documentation then they would know that they were doing something through universal credit so what are these people doing forging signatures then <sighs> please don't give your financial details to anybody i don't know how many times we've got to be told don't give your financial details to anyone unless you're actually in that government building in a bank or in the DWP or in the tax office HMRC don't be giving out your financial details to anyone it's too late now for these people it's sad really the DWP approves the eligible claim and transfers money to the victim's account the fraudster then requests that the victim transfer them a significant portion of the money as the find is free. Now, I would have thought this should be told up front. I don't see how they can ask you for a finder's fee after the fact. And if they ask for the fee, finder's fee up front, I'm sure the person, if they knew how much it was going to be, they wouldn't bother with the loan. The victim, but there again, if they think it's free money, they probably think, oh, well, I'm getting this extra money and I don't have to pay it back. So I'm still 500 better off. I'm still six or 700 better off. Maybe that's how they think. The victim then receives a letter from DWP about their universal credit application and realizes that they have been duped. The victim is then left to repay the total amount initially borrowed. One victim was introduced to this scam by a friend on social media. The friend helped them receive the free grant of over £1,000, only to later be asked to transfer 500 to the fraudster's account as a finder's fee. So he said it was a free grant, that one. But only afterwards they said they got to give him a finder's fee. 1000 so she only gets 500 the victim only realised they'd fallen victim to a scam after they received a letter from the DWP requesting payments for the loan. Action Fraud has warned people to never share personal or financial information with someone they don't know and trust, especially if it's in response to an offer of free money or a free grant. Anything too good to be true usually is. The DWP will never approach you in the street or ask you for your personal financial details over social media. I mean, that's common sense. It's like we, we, we used to get these letters from HMRC saying that, um, well, I know I got one and I know other people did, saying that you're entitled, you're entitled to a tax rebate. Click on this link to apply. I never touched it because fortunately I'm not I know I'm not entitled to a tax rebate. But I suppose I thought I was entitled to a tax rebate. But remember, HMRC are not going to send things like that to you on social media. They or by your email. They're going to send you a letter. But these people, all they do is wait for a moment's weakness. I mean, they actually go through your contacts and use a name that you know of somebody and they switch the name slightly and call it something else and make out like that name is writing to you that's how bad it is that's how uh, conniving these people are that's the lengths that they go to make you click on a link don't click on any links and look for misspellings hopefully you can spell but a lot of these they give themselves away because they can't bloody spell and their english is abominable 
So be careful. Victims described being approached by someone who says they worked for Job Centre Plus. They could be smartly dressed and even have a badge or ID to prove that they are acting on behalf of the Job Centre. They promised one victim she'd receive a grant from the government that she does that doesn't need to be paid back. To apply for universal credit advance on your behalf, they will ask for ID such as your driving license or passport, your bank card or details of your accounts, and they could even ask to take a photo of you. Can you imagine giving them all that information? What else are they going to do with it? One victim reported that the first sign that she had been scammed was when her tax credits were stopped. When she called up to ask about it, she was told she couldn't claim tax credit and universal credit at the same time. Repayments started to be taken from her benefits as soon as her universal pay credit payments started. Advances for universal credit need to be paid back in 12 monthly instalments after you get your first universal credit payment. It's definitely not free money and scammers are trying to make it out that it is. If you have any concerns about your benefits, you should visit www.gov.uk, that's G for Gov, Gov, O for Oscar, V for Victor, .uk, forward slash, contact, dash, job centre, dash, plus. So www.gov.uk forward slash contact dash job center dash plus. If you have any concerns, do that. That's all I've got to say. And I hope you haven't been victim. Bye bye.